Asgard and Biverest and Otto Schenk's interpretation of Wagner's drama Das Rheingold in Norse mythology, Asgard is a location associated with gods. It appears in a multitude of Old Norse sagas and mythological texts. Some researchers identify Asgard as one of the nine worlds surrounding the tree Yggdrasil. Norse mythology portrays Asgard as a fortified home to the Iser tribe of gods, located in the sky. Asgard consists of smaller realms that individually do not appear as frequently in mythological poems and prose. Ancient Norse eschatology envisages the total destruction of Asgard during Ragnarok, and its later restoration after the world's renewal. The word Asgarther is a compound formed with the Old Norse words As and Garther. Possible anglicizations include, Asgarther, Asgard, Asagard, Asgarder, Asgarder, Asgarth, Asgarth, Asagird, and Asgarder. Historians refer to three principal sources that depict Asgard. They include the Poetic Edda, the Prose Edda, and Heimskringla, which consists of several sagas. The Poetic Edda consists of several Old Norse poems of unknown authorship that date back to the 13th century. The majority of these poems come from the medieval text Codex Regis, also known as Kanungsbach. Voluspa Voluspa, the first poem in the Poetic Edda, provides some of the most complete and accurate depictions of the twelve lesser realms of Asgard, which include Breidablik, Valhalla, and Thrudheim. It also describes the Yggdrasil, a mythical tree that connects all nine worlds with Asgard located beneath one of its three roots. Finally, Voluspa provides a vague description of the location of Ithavalr, one of the most common meeting places of Iser gods. Grimnismal Grimnismal is one of the shorter poems in the Poetic Edda. It contains a brief depiction of Biverest, one of the twelve realms of Asgard that connects it to Midgard. The Prose Edda, also referred to as the Younger Edda, is often attributed to the 13th century historian Snorra Sturluson. As one of the most detailed descriptions of Norse mythology, the Prose Edda provides a thorough history of Asgard and its inhabitants. It consists of four parts, Prologue, Jilfaginning, Skaldskaparmal, and Hadadal. Prologue and Prologue, Snorra Sturluson shares his interpretation of the skaldic poems and legends. His analysis corresponds to modern historians' belief that Iser gods were, in fact, real clans that traveled from the east to northern territories. According to Snorra, Asgard represented the town of Troy before Greek warriors overtook it. After the defeat, Trojans moved to northern Europe, where they became a dominant group due to their advanced technologies and culture. Eventually, other tribes began to perceive the Trojans and their leader Troy as gods. Jilfaginning Jilfaginning, the second part of the prose Edda, contains mythological depictions of world creation, in chronological order. In this section, Snorra establishes the fundamentals of Norse mythology, such as the creation and fortification of Asgard, and introduces the main Iser gods such as Thor, Odin, and Baldr. Jilfaginning also describes Ragnarok, an event that would bring destruction to the nine worlds and cause their subsequent rebirth. Skaldskaparmal and Skaldskaparmal, Snorra shifts focus to language and the nature of poetry. In the dialogue between the Norse god, Aegir, and the skaldic god, Bragi, it illustrates how various aspects of poetry and nature are intertwined. This part of the prose Edda highlights the war between Iser and Vanir gods, including the fortification of Asgard. Heimskringla is a collection of sagas written by Snorra Sturluson that contains accounts on the Swedish and Norwegian king dynasties. The name of the saga comes from Kringla Heimsens. Inglinga Saga The first saga and the manuscript further develops Snorra's historical interpretation of Old Norse mythos. In the Inglinga Saga, he rejects his earlier notion of Troy as the historical location of Asgard. Snorra then provides an overview of Norse kings and their dynasties based on earlier sagas and poems. In his texts, he provides short depictions of Iser gods, often searching for parallels between them and Norse kings. While many sources mention Asgard as consisting of numerous distinct realms, only a handful of sagas provide their descriptions. Ruled by Odin, Valhalla is fortified with a golden hall where the souls of mighty warriors arrive after their deaths in battle. It also serves as a home to Valkyries who oversee the souls of the dead and guide them to Valhalla. As attested in the Poetic Edda, Odin amasses an army, Ain Harjar, for Ragnarok, where his warriors are expected to join him in battle. They train daily against each other to hone their combat skills. However, only half of those who have fallen in combat reach Valhalla. The others arrive at another realm, Folkfanger, where the goddess Freya resides. Bivris differs from other realms, as it connects Asgard, the world of gods, with Midgard, the world of people. In the Prose Edda, Snor describes it as a rainbow bridge that starts in him in Bjorg. 
The poetic Edda ultimately predicts its destruction in Ragnarok during the attack of the Muspelheim forces. Folkfanger is a rarely depicted realm of Asgard. Besides accepting half of those slain in battles, Folkfanger's principal inhabitants include Freya and her two daughters, Jersimi and Nas. They reside in the main hall, Sesramur, which is decorated with natural ornaments. Sagas in the poetic Edda mention Folkfanger's rich flora and fauna, which correlates with Freya's love for nature and wild creatures. Located on the border of Asgard, Himinbjorg is home to the god Heimdallr, who watches over Midgard and humanity. The poetic Edda depicts Heimdallr as drinking fine mead in Himinbjorg while protecting the Rainbow Bridge, Viverist. When enemies from Muspelheim destroy Viverist, Heimdallr will blow in his horn Gjallarhorn to announce the beginning of Ragnarok. According to Grimnismal, Baalskirner is the largest building and one of the most significant realms of Asgard. It contains 540 rooms and serves as a residence of Thor and Sif, and their many children. In the prose Edda, Snorra predicts the partial destruction of Baalskirner during the battle between Thor and the world serpent Jormungandr when Ragnarok comes. Upon arrival in Asgard, Iser gods make it their home, as attested by Snorra in the prose Edda. After counseling with the head of Mimir, Odin assigns other gods to rule separate parts of the land and build palaces. However, their territories remain open to attacks from enemies, forcing Iser to protect their lands. One day, an unnamed giant, claiming to be a skillful smith, arrives at Asgard on his stallion, Svadilfari. He offers help in erecting a protective wall around Asgard in a mere three winters. In return for this favor, he asks for the sun, moon, and marriage with Freya. Despite Freya's opposition, the gods agree to fulfill his request if he builds a wall in just one winter. As part of the deal, they guarantee the giant's safety. As time goes on, the gods grow desperate, as it becomes apparent that the giant will construct the wall on time. To their surprise, his stallion contributes much of the progress, swiftly moving boulders and rocks. To preserve Freya and keep the sun and moon, one of the gods, Loki, comes up with a plan. He changes his appearance to that of a mare, and distracts Svadilfari to slow down construction. Without the help of his stallion, the giant cannot complete his task in time, and Thor breaks his skull with a hammer. Several months later, Loki gives birth to an eight-legged stallion, Sleipnir, who later becomes Odin's steed. Iser gods later finish the wall and fully fortify Asgard for future battles. Ragnarok consists of a series of foretold events that ultimately lead to the destruction and subsequent renewal of the world. Ragnarok begins after the invasion of fire giants from Muspelheim, who destroy the Biverest. This causes Heimdallr to blow the Gjallarhorn, announcing the upcoming doom of gods. Odin swiftly consults with the head of Mimir, who foretells the destruction of Asgard and Odin's death. Iser gods decide to march into battle gathering their forces on the battlefield Vigrid. Their enemies, led by the fire giant Surt, march through Asgard, destroying many of the palaces and fortifications. Odin, Thor, Loki, Heimdallr, and other gods, die in the battle. As the Vigrid grounds become soaking wet with blood, the world is submerged underwater, ending everything that ever existed. As attested in the Voluspa, after the destruction of the old world, a new one emerges. Several gods survive and restore Asgard, bringing it to the highest ever levels of prosperity. Thor first appeared in the Marvel Universe within comic series Journey into Mystery in the issues number 83 during August 1962. Following this release, he becomes one of the central figures in the comics along with Loki and Odin. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Thor and Loki make their first appearance together in the 2011 film Thor. After that, Thor becomes a regular character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and reappears in several films, including the Avengers series. Asgard becomes the central element of the film Thor, Ragnarok, where it is destroyed following the old Norse mythos. These and other Norse mythology elements also appear in video games, TV series, and books based in and on the Marvel Universe. These depictions do not follow the old Norse sagas and poems carefully. However, many philologists began to notice an increased interest in Norse mythology from the general public due to their popularity. Asgard will be an explorable realm in the upcoming video game God of War, Ragnarok, a sequel to 2018 soft reboot Norse-themed God of War. The realm will include collectibles and realm-specific side missions. And it will also play a crucial role in the game story. In the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Asgard is featured as part of a vision quest. Thanks for watching.